Greetings, 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 and welcome to another exciting an informative episode of Caribbean Classroom, Child Abuse, Child Sex Abuse. That is the program we're doing tonight, Child Sex Abuse. The conversation is going to be hot. I promise you it's going to be informative. Get pen and paper. We, we're going to talk some stuff tonight that I know some of you might be a little comfort uncomfortable with. Mm. Um, we're going to talk some stuff tonight that uh, some of you don't want to hear about. We're going to talk some stuff tonight I hope will empower some of you, I know I'm not going to empower all of you, but some of you to do something about this subject. There in the news today, we have um, um, a, a priest out in Maspeth who's been accused, I think we're up to about 25 women coming out now saying that they were abused by this particular priest. Mm. We have the Harvey Weinstein, Weinstein mm -hmm. in Hollywood, the Hollywood people. Yes. Uh, all kinds of big names coming out and, 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 and so forth. We don't know them, but when I, they make the news. They make the headlines. But the people who we're going to be talking about tonight, they don't ever make a headline. They don't ever make the news. They never make a front page, right? That's the people that we're going to be speaking of. The people who live next door to you, the people who live upstairs of you, the people who live downstairs of you, around the corner from where you live. Some of you may be in the same house where you live, okay? I want to read a short excerpt. Oh, and, and, and by the way, I have a whole ton of books right here. I don't know if, if my camera operator could find these books and just take a shot at this pile of books right here. All of this is at the library. And the reason why I, I, I chose to uh, bring all of these different titles, uh, Predators and Child Molesters, this, this is the title of this one here. I have another one here, When Your Child Has Been Molested. When Your Child Has Been Molested. I have another one here called Megan's Law. Maybe some of you might remember this law, this book, um, this, this incident from a few years ago. Megan's Law. Child Sexual Abuse, which is the, the title of the program that I'm, I, I'm running with here. Yeah? Um, Beyond Betrayal. Beyond Betrayal. And we're going to cover this subject tonight. I, I want you to get pen and paper, and I want you to look very closely. Now, we're also taking phone calls. And somebody, I don't know who, how I'm going to set it up yet, but somebody going get to get a copy, this copy. This is the copy I'm giving up with this copy on the show tonight. This is my friend, Michelle Sabrina Alexander. She wrote this book, Helpless Cries. Michelle is from Grenada. And it is written in dialect, Grenadian dialect, so that if you are not familiar with that Grenadian dialect, it might be a little bit difficult for you to read, but the subject matter is covered. I want to encourage you to, somebody, if you call me, and when, when that number goes up, I don't know which, how we're going to set it up yet, but I'm going to set it up, and somebody will be getting the copy of this book tonight on the show. Child Sexual Abuse here on Caribbean Classroom. This is the setup. Tracy Ross never knew her biological father, who died after a brain aneurysm when she was still an infant. So when her mother married um, Danny, a gracious man with an, an all-wheel drive Jeep, and a love of hiking, four-year-old Tracy was ecstatic to have a father figure in her life. A loving and devoted stepfather, Danny introduced Tracy's family to the joys of fishing, deer hunting, uh, camping, and hiking among the most pristine mountains of rural Idaho. Danny was everything Tracy dreamed a dad would be, protective, brave, and kind. Uh, but when his dependency on his eight-year-old daughter's companionship went too far, everything changed. And ladies and gentlemen, everything changed. I have a survivor on this program tonight. Her name is Charmaine Prince. Welcome, Charmaine, to Caribbean Classroom. Thank you for having me. She is a survivor. Next to Charmaine, I have, he, is, he told me that he is a social worker counselor. His name is Atiba, and I had to give some credits here to Sharon Gordon, who put me onto Atiba and several John Crow. If you're looking to do, do this program, you had to have Atiba on. First time I'm seeing Atiba. Atiba, welcome to Caribbean Classroom. My pleasure. Yes, indeed. Mm -hmm. And Atiba, give me the, the power shake, you know. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> and next to Atiba, one of the prettiest women I know from Jamaica. I mean, my wife was from Jamaica. <laughs> so I can't say that she's the prettiest. Because, you know, my wife cannot stand it. But anyway. <laughs> Marie Dunn who happened to be on a panel with us a few weeks ago in Brooklyn when we did the, the book signing with uh, Michelle. And Marie, welcome to Caribbean Classroom. Thank you for having me. Once more time, nice to see you guys. To go back to the opening 
title, um, um, segment I read here, <coughs> everything changed. Talk to me, ladies and gentlemen. You know, that is so factual, John Crow, because when a child is abused at age eight, that child is forced to become an adult. So psychologically, emotionally, everything changes. Biologically, you're an eight year old, but you just experience woman stuff. Woman stuff. Big so woman. you're forced to become a big woman, even though you don't have the psychological understanding and the, and the ability to handle that. Eight years old. Eight years old, or five years or old, five years like old. in my case. Oh, whoa, five. Five. Jesus. Well, I read. So, I, I'm start, I just started reading Sabrina's book. Okay. I just started. And when she, she gave me uh, defining my trust, or uh, def defiling my trust, is the title of the, the paragraph, and I section it out. And when she talked about how the stepfather, again, like in this book, the source of all things is the one I just read. Tracy Ross is the, is the author. And she talks about she knew something was wrong. She felt something was wrong, but she didn't have the strength the temerity, the, the, the whatever it is that you need that you can tell a man, listen, get the hell out, get the fuck out from me, what's wrong with you? You, can't, oh, oh. you know, you, as a big woman, you can do that, but as a child, you are subdued, you are yes, weakened, yes, yes, yes. even more so. Mm -hmm. Talk to me, little um, ladies and ladies and gentlemen who are in those field of talking to people about those things. So basically, as a child, um, as Charmin um, eloquently said just now, that child is robbed, their innocence is taken away from them. That child does not have the capacity to understand what's actually going on. They're going through so much physical changes, number one. There's the emotional aspect of it, and that child feels helpless. That child will feel so alone, and then they can't trust anyone. It's very hard because you're looking at, this may be your daddy, your stepfather, a family friend, someone that you're close to, because in most cases, the perpetrators are always someone that you're clo they're used to, right? So this child, trust that person and that trust is broken that child is taking advantage of can you imagine what that child is going and through? No, and you live with that for the rest <coughs> of your life for the rest of your life and then just to add insult to injury if you never had the opportunity to have that discussion to share what you're going through each time you're re-traumatizing yourself and you're victimized each time because you have not gotten the chance to disclose what's going on uh, but then you're scared to say anything yes and in our culture in our caribbean community you taking you 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 spoiling the man's mm -hmm. name. Yes. What you doing? You can't say that about the man. This is right. a good man. He does take us hiking and this in Tracy Ross case. I mean, just not a Caribbean author. Um, I don't know where she um, Idaho, right? Mm -hmm. So Idaho, Ohioho, Jamaica, Guyana, yes. Trinidad, mm -hmm. Grenada. It doesn't matter where, where we from. We we all experiencing the same trauma. Same trauma. Talk to me, Mr. Atiba, you're quiet on me now. What I was going to say is um, I work with adults who are HIV positive, mentally ill, uh, substance abuse, and so I'm kind of at the, the tail end. So that child that grows up, that was, that was um, abused. abused, destroyed, defiled at 8 o'clock, at 8, sorry, at 8. At 5, at 5. At 5. Hmm. When they become adults, it can lead to promiscuity, ah. substance abuse, um, suicidal tendencies, mental illness. And oftentimes, offenders or perpetrators are hurt people. So what we say at our program is hurt people hurt people. Hurt people. And it becomes a cycle. And if you're in a culture where, um, I don't say necessarily a chauvinist culture, but a, a toxic, male toxic environment where a man is supposed to be a man and do these certain things and you can't question him, it's unhealthy. So we also have to look at how we're raising our children, boys and girls. We have to tell boys that it's inappropriate to engage with a female in a certain way. And we have to look at our family members' behaviors. We have to look at our behaviors. We have to um, understand that children naturally will explore themselves and stuff, but when it becomes overly sexualized, when it becomes out of the norm, then questions need to be asked. Um, you need to question people because we're, we're living in a different society. And when we don't deal with things at the inception, then as we become an adult, it becomes stunted, it becomes perverted. 
So we need to make an interruption as things are happening. And, and I say leave the gate open. Yes. Leave the gate open mm -hmm. for him, your son, yes. grandson, nephew, yes. cousin, yes. to come to you and express himself yes. and say the things that are bothering him. Mm -hmm. My seven-year-old stepdaughter, uh, I remember when we were in the apartment, and she, you know she came from Jamaica, and uh, so one day, I, you know, just flippantly like I do with my wife, with my with my daughter, and so flippantly I tap her on her on her, on her butt, and she said to me, you know, quietly because we had that kind of uh, communication, right? Um, John Crow, I don't think that was I'm I'm not cool with that. Mm. That was not. I don't, I'm not comfortable with that. Right. And I said, oh, I'm sorry. Yes. You know, and I, you know, but we had that, if you will, window of communication that we could talk that way. Yes. And I was not like, well, you know, you're in my house. I could, you know, I could touch you if I want to touch you, you know, right. that kind of a thing. And we have that happening a lot in our communities. Now, how do we warn parents, or what is it that parents, what are the signs parents need to be looking for um, in the children uh, or children who are in the care? What are they looking for? First thing, parents need to pay attention because there, the, there's a dramatic change in behavior after a child is abused. The, that child who was once maybe introverted becomes extremely extroverted. Or the child that was obedient to the parent become extremely rebellious. So there is a dramatic change in behavior. And if parents aren't attentive to their children, they may not observe that. Because the cues? No. So you have to look for cues? You have to look for the cues. And there are signs also. The child may be saying things to you. And if you're not listening, you would not be able to pick up those cues. So um, I said to my son, I said, listen, anybody touch you inappropriately, let me know. Does that, is that, a, is that a, 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 a good thing? But we don't have a, a relationship that I can tell you anything. You told me that if anyone touched me, I can tell you. But we don't have that kind of relationship. Uh -huh. So when it happens, because it's something that is so invasive, unless I have a good relationship and a close relationship with you as my authority figure, I would not tell you. So... And just adding to that as well, it's so important for parents to pay attention because sometimes even before the abuse starts happening, if you're an attentive parent and you pay attention, so Uncle Tom may be coming over and Uncle Tom always wants to babysit. Uncle Tom wants to spend time alone with his child. Those are warning signs you got to pay attention to. Uh -huh. If there is a step parent in the home and more focus is placed on Teresa, mm -hmm. right? That's something that you want to pay attention to. Mm -hmm. You understand? And parents need to be open. They need to give that child that opportunity to say, okay, fine, you know what? Even though they may be telling them of the signs to look for, right? Mm -hmm. But you have to have that trusting relationship mm -hmm. with that child. Mm -hmm. If that child does not feel comfortable to come to you and say, hey, mom, this is what's going on, whether it be a stepfather, Uncle Tom, whomever it is, parents got to start taking responsibility. Some parents have to start taking responsibility because sometimes we put our children in harm ways because it benefits us. Uh -huh. Convenience. And exactly. Right. And that's an issue. I that need to go to the party next week and I need somebody to babysit for me. Exactly. exactly. So or not only that, because I know poverty is tied mm -hmm. with a lot with child sex abuse. I know that a Property? lot. Property? Poverty. Oh, poverty. You okay. understand? And yes. I understand that aspect. But as a parent, with me being born in Jamaica, I grew up with in a, um, a two-family ho um, household, right? And I had my mom and I had my dad. And my mom made it a point of duty to expose us and have these conversations with us, even though it was difficult, because it's like a taboo back then. Yes. You understand? Yes. You ask but where even today, still Exactly, it's still a taboo. They'll right. tell you that, you know, you drop from the sky or right. some craziness like that, right? <laughs> but my mom made it a point of duty that she was always home and she went out and she worked and did what she had to do in order to protect us. She was like, she did not want to expose us to a stepfather that's going to come into the home and try to change that around. So parents, we gotta, some parents, we've got to start taking that responsibility. We can't say because this is what we need. We need to have the security, right, to say somewhere to live and drive a nice car, stuff like that. We've got to think about our child in the process and how that's going to affect our child. And that's it, not, not just worried about leaving the child at home alone. That's exactly. That, that's, that's just one of the aspects exactly. of protecting the child. Exactly. Okay, we talk about what to look for, signs. 
Okay. What happens to those children who are what we call fast? And they grow up they grow up faster than they should. And they just fast. And they have no parents. Mm -hmm. um, your friend <coughs> Mashida's movie, uh, Left it's Behind. Uh, the scars of our mother, right? Of mm -hmm. our mother's dreams. Mm -hmm. And and talking <coughs> about uh, the barrel children and, and those who left behind. Mm -hmm. uh, how how we co how we protect those children? What do we do for those children? I, I think another thing that we have to look at is boundaries. We have to teach children boundaries, whether they're f so. Some kids are are extroverted or introverted, or as you say, fast, a little more inquisitive, uh, just just curious about things or into things. You yeah, have like to me, I used to be very, I was, I was forward. I, was, I wasn't fast in terms mm. of doing things because right. I was an old man when I did the first time. But mm. anyway, that's another, that's <laughs> that's another, another story. Room. That's another show. Huh? <laughs> another show. That's another show. <laughs> but no, I mean, but we, you know what I'm saying. That, right. you know, those, they're quick on the, you know, like right. they're going to pull the boy in the, in the closet and say like, let me see you. Oh, let me see you. Right. Let, me see you. Right. let me see what you're working right. with. Right. As, as I said before, yeah. but, um, there's a certain age when children become curious about themselves. Right. They become curious about what I have right. when they're looking. That's a natural thing, okay. right? But when it becomes overly sexualized, they've learned that from somewhere. They've mm -hmm. been exposed somewhere. So usually children who are fast, you have to look at what environment are they coming from. Do they have an older brother or a sister? Did they see pornography? Did they? What, what, did someone kiss them? Because a lot of times children, things don't just drop out the sky. You see it. Mm -hmm. You don't and just, you go try it. You go try it. Exactly. If you watch some of these videos on social media, the kids whining and dancing up. They're seeing it, so they're mimicking that behavior. Dirty Berry, look at Dirty Berry. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what that is, but you don't know. <laughs> you're not Jamaican. I don't know what that is either. What can I? Fit? I'm sorry to. I'm Dirty Berry is a. I'm sorry to disappoint you, but I don't. A YouTube sensation with all kind of. Right. All kind of videos and stuff. I probably hear about it, but I don't really pay attention. But even, even those videos where, <laughs> where the, the children are, are seeing things that are provocative, I mean, some parents will say, I, I don't want my child to see it. But right. if you have your child see it, sit down I and have talk a conversation. about it. It's like when you eat fish, it has bones. Take the bones out. We have to dissect it. Uh, is, is this something that, how do you feel about this? Go ahead, Mr. Kongsler. You know, we, have to, we, have to, we have to unpack it. We, we're not in a day, in the age where you want to hide things from children yeah. because right. they're going to do it anyway. Right. So you might as well eat the fish take out the bones, and we're going to discuss this. Right, right. Shaman? You know, um, you said a child that is fast. And when you hear that, that term, it sounds like a label, you yeah. know? Okay. Um, but why is the child fast? What happened? Uh -huh. um, what, what, what socialization that child was involved in and exposed to what was was what was that child exposed to so a lot of times we label children and we don't know the reasons they're doing whatever because some 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 behaviors are it it's not just i want to be inquisitive it's because something happened to get to spark that yeah mm -hmm. and so then they're going they're going, they're going to explore it so no okay all right, so, all right, I take the label back. I take <laughs> back the label, I will take back the label. No, no, I, no, I'm a quick learner, you know. Mm. Take back the label. Listen, you are watching Caribbean Classroom. My name is John Crowley, host and the producer. We're speaking to Shaman Prince, a survivor, as well as Atiba Saint. McLean, I'm not a saint yet. So not saint? Uh, Atiba is the last McLean. name? McLean, McLean, okay. Yeah, I don't know where I get saint from. Okay. And <laughs> Marie Dunn. We're speaking child abuse, child sexual abuse. Normally, I mean, I, I try to, it's a heavy subject. Um, it's a very heavy subject, and so I try to keep things light and lively. But while I, you know, try to sprinkle the humor in here, it is a serious, serious conversation that we're having. Let's go now to the hardest part of this conversation, and is the politics, and our political responsibility. Not just parents. But I'm I'm not I'm taking it outside of the home. I'm taking it of the community. And I, and I, when I say poli po poli political responsibility, I'm not talking of the politicians yes. necessarily, right. but us as a community. Mm -hmm. And when we hear of it or see of it or we see a child acting out, what's our responsibility or what should be our responsibility? You know, I can share a recent case um, that occurred in Guyana. Uh, a young man was sodomized thrown into the Burbish River, murdered 12 years old. And the perpetrator 
was known in the community for troubling little boys. Leg boys? Yes, mm -hmm. and neighbors heard the screams and did not do anything. Um, it is our, I, I guess we have moved away from the village raising the child mm -hmm. because screams of pleasure and screams of agony are totally different. But and if you hear a child screaming out of agony and you wouldn't react, you have become desensitized and you know, you're, you're aware that this is a known child molester and you did nothing. And he lost his life. The kid is dead. He's dead. And the guy is still alive. Yes, he's in prison. Oh, he's in prison now. Yeah, well, he got locked up waiting for trial. But not, not for that act. He got locked up for that. Oh, he did. And then more young <coughs> boys came out ah. and said they were abused 10 years ago and five years ago. Like the Catholic Church kind of a thing. Yes. Like how a lot of people now thinking about the priests, mm -hmm. different priests, mm -hmm. different places. So now, is that the same kid where you have the petition? Yes. Now is your time to talk about the petition. Yes, yeah, so I have a petition for this child. Um, making demands on the government of Guyana to change one of the s sexual abuse laws to the Archibald law, because the child name is Leonard Archibald, mm -hmm. and to ensure that the Guyana police force has a specialized unit to deal with child sexual abuse, because um, there were a lot of victims that actually said they went to the police station and nothing was done. So we're demanding, we have over 10,000 votes and um, signatures, sorry, and we started it on September 25th. Um, and the intention is to, we just got the family on board and the family signed the petition. And the intention is to get international NGOs involved and really put pre pressure on the Guyana government because there, there is laws that are stringent um, let me just say this, in Guyana, you have to wait until you're 18 years old to get an ID card, to get a driver's license, to get everything else, but you can give consent to sex at 16. Wow. Yeah, Greta, Greta, they have some kind of strange law like that too. Yeah. Uh, but that's, that's coming out of the British yeah. colonial... Yeah, the system. colonialism. L yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. And, and unfortunately, I would say it like this, it seems like our politicians now, the elected officials, they have no balls and, and they can't, no brains to say, well, wait a second, this is not right. We need to fix this. Right. But this, this particular law was revised by the previous administration, the PPP, in 2013. But we're talking about, no, we're talking about the age of consent. That's what I'm saying. It's in the law that's 16 years old. That you could give consent. Yeah, and, and this was revised in 2013, four years ago. And, and how people could sign up this, this petition? You can actually go to change.org and the petition is justice for Leonard Archibald. Say it again. Change.org and the petition is justice for Leonard Archibald. You don't have to be a guy who needs to sign it. Anyone can sign it. Change.org, um, justice, justice for, for Leonard, Leonard Archibald. Archibald. Mm -hmm. um, we have over 10,000. Yes. How much are you looking to get? Like 20. Training for t 20? Yeah. No, have you spoken to any one of the elected officials? No. As yet? As yet? No. They actually, I, after maybe 8,000, I got their email addresses. So every person that signed the petition after 8,000, they're receiving an email. And um, one would think Who, that the, po the, the politicians in Guyana, okay. one would think that they would reach out and have a discussion or engage in anything, they have not done so. But you know people in the government, don't you? Um, yeah. So? So I'm now reaching out to them. Make up? I'll make an international statement. Oh, okay. But then you, they, they, they don't have to pay you no money because you're in America and they're in Guyana. Okay. I have people on, 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 uh, on the ground No, no, I'm not, I'm saying it, I'm saying it like that because sometimes, I mean, uh, Mohammed don't, don't want to come to the mountain, you ought to go to Mohammed, right? Or, you know, uh, some kind of ways that is make that statement. I'm just saying, that rather than wait for them, you know, take it to, take it to them kind of a thing. Well, we will okay. eventually. eventually. We have some eventually. S some other steps after the petition. Okay. But that's on the pol that's on the on the elected official side. I'm looking at now community, like and and like I like your reference in terms of you hearing the screams and you choosing to stay quiet, mm. you choosing 
you, you, you know you notice this particular house is not a house it's a house of Sunday. ill repute mm -hmm. and children always the person in that house always offering candy and offering sweetie and you know buying them ice cream and so on and so forth and you know that but you know it, it's not unusual did you want to say something you could that, that um, studies have been have been uh, done where out in public when people see something they don't necessarily get involved because I'm in a business it's I'm not it's, it's not, not my business right and so and I'm surprised that in the Caribbean, that's I, I kind of would think that here, with our place where it's yeah. so diverse or different, but not necessarily. There was an incident. I mean, off topic. This white man was on train. He was drunk. He was saying the N word. They beat him up and throw him off the train. You know. So there are instances where people do get involved when mm -hmm. things happen. I'm just wondering, is this, was this particular person someone that people feared? Because a lot of times, predators or people they're in prominence. Because you mm -hmm. you, men you mentioned the priest. There's football players. Does this person have prominence? Does he have power? Is he physically strong? Why didn't people Intervene. confront him? Because yeah. in other places, he would have been chopped up. What? Big time. You know, but again, I'm not in the situation, right. but there's the other factors involved, and it's easiest for us to look at the situation and say, well, how did this happen? But we have to understand who this person was, and this is why these things kind of repeat themselves. You know? In the village that I grew up in, and and it's not specifically to that, right? Mm -hmm. But we have, uh, we have, um, we had those men at home who used to go from door to door. We used to call them open door, and and shave a man, and so that while you are sleep in your house, you wake up next morning and you everything clean. They shave. They come in your, while you're sleeping and shave you, mm. for real, and and sometimes sodomize you or rape you wow. in your sleep. Mm. Well, in my particular village, there was the rumor that this particular guy was on his way into our village. Mm. Well, he made it to the, let's say he made it to the corner just before the center of the village. Because somebody identified him, that he stopped over by this lady who, 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 whose husband was in England. And what happened to him, and this is why, why I don't understand why in Grenada today, and I could speak in Grenada sp specifically, that these things keep happening and happening and happening. Because everybody in Grenada at one time, when I was growing up, had what is called a bull pistol, or a board and stick, right? Or some, or a, definitely a cutlass, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. And they, didn't fr they were not afraid to use it. So anybody who violated a child, for instance, I remember one case where this kid, you know, they decided to come after this little girl in the village, and they never came back in the village again. Because she was a little girl, and little, you know, nipples just started to Developing. sprout, you know? Mm -hmm. So then they decided to, they're coming up to St. James to find girl and they never came back again. They only one visit. The guy in particular, that night when he got to the corner, he got to the corner and somebody said, that is him. That, all, that is all the words that were spoken. First of all, my, my, it was in my grandfather's shop. They came, somebody said, I, I just see the shaver man down the road. And that is what, the, I just see the shaver man down the road and he's heading up to St. James. And everybody dispersed. Nobody gave no cue. Nobody said, well, go get this or go get that. They, everybody dispersed. And then somebody, as he got to the corner, somebody said, that is him. And everybody came out from wherever they were and was licks that he, he ran down this hill, down. And when he got to the bottom of the hill, when he couldn't take more licks, he just lift himself bodily over this edge and drop in this lady yard. And the lady dragged him in and hide him, hide him under her bed. That was the end of any conversation about Shaverman. No, I'm not proposing that <laughs> vigilante style that you go and beat up people. But I don't understand how is it that we have lost or seem to have lost this kind of protectiveness that once existed. Yeah. So I guess we have to go back to basics, right? Um, I'm from Jamaica and growing up, if I go down the street and look at my neighbor the wrong way, your mother got a call. My mommy got a call. When I got home, she's whooping my ass, and yes. then she's asking questions later. That's right. So I think we have to go back as people, and a lot of times we're so quick to jump to talk about the politicians. What are they not, not doing this? Why are our government not doing this? Right. But we have to realize that we make up the government. Right. We are the people, and we have to go out there and stand up for what we believe in, right? Because 
nowadays, and I guess it's because of the society that we live in and the culture that has changed so much, it's like everybody's just minding their own business. And especially here in America, right? Because it's, we're such a so happy country. The least thing that happen, you know, you get, you get caught up in court, you get sued for whatever the issues are, right? So people tend to, sometimes people tend to just stay away and they don't want to have to deal with what's going on. And like I said, we're sitting here having this conversation about child sex abuse, right? Because it's, it's hitting home to us and we're feeling the impact of it and we understand what's going on. But you have their people out there because this has nothing to do with them. They disassociate themselves with it. So we have to figure out a way to come back together as one, as a nation, and try to work this through. We can go in the school system. You have a kid that goes to school, this kid, kid is an extrovert, or this kid is always getting really good grades, then you notice this, chi this child is failing, this child is acting out. Instead of sitting back and say, oh, Johnny is a rude boy, or Johnny is just disrespectful, why not figure out what's going on with Johnny? We all have a responsibility here. We have the school system, we have social workers. It's so much, it's everybody's business. We can't make it be that, okay, it's about the counselors, it's about the survivor. No, it's everybody's business. And we all have to join force and we have to pay attention. And like we say again, we go back to poverty. Most times, sex abuse, it comes from poverty because we have these kids coming from these homes that has, um, the parents can hardly afford to take care of them financially. And then you go back to school, who is, who is responsible? Who is helping? Who is paying attention? We shouldn't turn a blind eye. We should sit that child down and figure out what's going on. But the child is not talking. The child is scared, like uh, 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 Charmaine said. Um, the, there's no open window for that child to express him or herself. Mm -hmm. And so she's not, uh, she's not willing to say express herself. what is happening. And you're absolutely right about that. So that's why you have to create that safe environment and build that trust. It's all about trust. If the, a child, excuse my French, a child or anyone can smell bullshit a mile away. And if you put on that act, like that, that child French. can see. I like that yeah, French. The that child can see what's going on. So that child is not going to open up to you. Right. You have to have that presence. You have to have that nurturing, that caring, and you have to be attentive. It cannot be about when it benefits you. You understand? You have to set it. You have to build that trust. Trust is built. You can't expect to just get it overnight. You have to develop that. How, how are your students that you encounter? You're in, a, in the school system, are you? No, I'm actually in foster care. In foster care. Yeah, but I deal with the school system as well sometimes. In, 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 mm -hmm. in, how, 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 how do they respond to you? So like I said, it takes a lot when a child comes into foster care because you've got to understand this child is removed from that community, that environment that that child is used to. So that child is going to come, that child is going to be withdrawn. Some, some of the kids, they may act out but it's your responsibility as the social worker to break that barrier. However, you gotta figure out how that barrier, how you're gonna break that barrier. A lot of times, sometimes when we meet our clients, I go in with one agenda, but the moment I meet that client, it changes. Uh, I have to take their direction, their directives. Yes. So that's just how you have to, you have to build that trust. So it's never, it's not, you, you, don't, you, you can't work it from a cookie angle. Uh, no, 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 no. No. Well, um, according to chapter seven um, in course number five, <laughs> <laughs> No, you just got to go with the flow. Uh -huh. Whatever that direction that that child is taking you, that's what you have to do. If it means that you have to get down to that child level, and when I say getting down to that child's level, you may have to stoop. You may have to cuddle that child. You may need to offer that but child a glass touch, of water. But you can't touch, in the United States, you cannot touch children as a, as a... I know, but sometimes, like I said, it all depends. You got to be careful. You have to have boundaries, right? If you see a child that's like really tearing up, breaking down, and you get to the point where that child feels like you're able to comfort her, then it's okay in my, in my for me, it's okay for me to do Until that. Until the supervisor walks in. Oh, then I'll deal with that. Because sometimes, <laughs> sometimes you have to just step aside. Once you know what you're doing is right, right, right. and you feel it within your gut, right. you have to just follow that. Right. I just want to say something. Um, most times we're, we're under the impression that the sex, child sexual abuse and poverty are synonymous. Um, right now in Guyana, we have one of the top high schools. One of the evidence of sexual abuse it's is cutting. It's cutting. Yes. And that school has the highest number of cutters. Mm -hmm. And it's, really? it's one of the top high schools in Guyana. Really? So, and a lot of poor people don't go to that school. 
Okay. Because you have to be brilliant. Ah. And you have to be bright. Um, to be bright yes. And then sometimes your parents have to have the money. So poverty and and se child sexual abuse might not always be synonymous. Mm. What I, what, well, I know we're talking about child sex abuse, but we also have to look at neglect. Mm -hmm. We also have to look at neglect is a parent not taking that child to their doctor's visits, not, not um, feeding the child properly. Nutrition. Is nutrition, you know. Um, is the child smelly? Is, so, I mean, sexual abuse is one piece of it, but mm -hmm. there's neglect, there is emotional abuse. There's, there's physical abuse. How, are the, how is the parent talking to the child? Are you saying, because a lot of times I observe parents, you, you, you see it in public, I can't stand you, or they're cursing mm -hmm. the child out. And so there's a disconnect. So if you're constantly beating or browbeating the child, you don't say anything positive, then that child has a low self-esteem. Uh. This child now becomes a victim to domestic violence and sexual abuse, becomes um, a victim to um, just allowing themselves to be, to be battered. So we have to look at, you know, sexual abuse is one, one facet of it, but there's, um, like I said, um, maltreatment, neglect, mm -hmm. emotional and physical abuse that also can, can tie into it because if, if a lot of times perpetrators will say, let's keep this a secret. Well, that's a, that's a code. And as you're saying, if money's involved, mm -hmm. I'll give you $20 if you keep your mouth shut. Right. Now, Buy children, ice cream. Right. Now, children in prestigious schools, there's this pressure. You know, you, can, you look at it in colleges. To if, blink. You, if you say anything, you lose your scholarship. Right. Or I won't let you graduate. So it's, all, it's about power. You have to understand that it's, sex is one piece of it, but it's about power. Rape is about power. When you defile someone, it's about power. Because so it's not, I'm trying to figure out, as a grown man, what pleasure are you, could you get from a five-year-old child? As a grown man, right. and you will have sex with a five-year-old, nine-year-old, 10-year-old, 13-year-old. What, what, what pleasure are you getting out of that? And some back, it goes back to we are a product of our environment. And um, sometimes those perpetrators, they were once abused, mm -hmm. they're victims themselves. Mm -hmm. And but they never got that chance to heal. So the cycle continues. That's it. And, and then you also, in, in school, were taught the, you know, Sigmund Freud, the, you know, about the, um, the id, the, the ego, and the, and the super ego. It is the instant gratification. Mm -hmm. You know, I can get up and just slap you in your head. But that's, there's consequences, consequential thinking. If I'm going to um, always act on impulse and no one's there to correct me, I might have a short lifespan. Or I might just think that that's appropriate. Then you, then you have your ego and says, well, that's not appropriate. Maybe I should wait. And, and then you have your super ego says, well, I don't think I need to behave that way because that's inappropriate. So your morals, how were you raised? Norms. Norms. If you grew up without Acceptance. any type of boundaries, then you're going to become an adult or a, an adolescent that has no boundaries. So my girlfriend, she likes to watch Criminal Minds, and I'm like, yo, you watch too much of this stuff, and it's crazy. But it's a teaching tool. I mean, shows are designed, and, and it, it's teaching. You see the unsub. You see the kind of behaviors that keeps being perpetrated. Did you ever try anything with you? <laughs> <laughs> That's another show. That's another show. <laughs> but, I'm just, but I'm just saying, you, you see this kind of thing. It, it's just it's inappropriate. It's not healthy. Right. So when you, when you constantly see it, then it's normalized. Right. You go to certain parades, the guys touch up on the women. And if you're a teenager or young, then you think it's appropriate to do that. Yes. And then you see how it can transfer into something else. So if you're not teaching your son or your daughter, say, hey, you don't do that. You see a young lady, you, you speak with your mouth. You don't need to touch someone. You Yo, nice like mask, what's wrong with you? Nice mask, oh God. Uh, yeah, nice mask, we're just right. having fun. Right, but then there could be a massacre if you, if you touch the wrong person. Aye, 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 aye. So you, you, you have to maybe, you have to change the way you interact with each other because you wouldn't, if that's my sister, I wouldn't want someone touching my sister. If that's my sister, my aunt, I wouldn't want, if you, want to, if you don't want to, someone to disrespect your aunt, why would you do it to someone else? All right then. Boundaries, family, community. All right then. Aye. This is going hard. Listen, you are watching Caribbean Classroom. Change.org, justice for Leonard Archibald. Again, change.org, justice for Leonard Archibald. And you don't have to be Guyanese to sign up. No. Anybody can sign. Anybody can sign it.
if you believe that children must not be abused and children must be allowed to live their lives as children, sign the petition. Very good. My name is Marie Dunn. I am currently a social worker. I work at Graham Wyndham Foster Care Agency. I'm the director for Family Success Program. I um, am motivated to help others because I was at one point in my life needing help and I had no one to support me. So I think it's really important that I am on the opposite side now where I could give back to my community. And I think it's like so important. So and that's why I do and the and job and I do. And, and she's from Jamaica. <laughs> Gee. Yes. I can't with you. You can, you can. So my name is Atiba McLean, and I've been doing social work, I guess, now for about 11 years. Um, I Re started off Has it been rewarding? It has been rewarding. It's, it's both rewarding and it's challenging. I've worked with children and families um, where the, the agency was the Jewish board. We would get a, a case, or a family referred to us because of truancy at home. Um, a dis, you know, a disruption. So we would have to come into the family, and and try and find a solution so that the parents can kind of run the household on their on their own. Um, now I work at um, St. Mary's Adult Day Care Center with adults, as I said, who are HIV um, positive, mentally ill, substance abuse, and these people are often, 99% of the time, child sex abuse, trauma. So now they become adults. 40, 50, 70 years old, carrying and they have addictions. There's food addiction, there's sex addiction, because something wasn't managed at oh. early on. The other thing I wanted to say is what's also important is when, as, as a parent or even as an adult, someone who's been abused, go and get therapy, go and get some help. That's something that our community, I think, is shifting. We have this stigma about getting help. And so if you, you find yourself in a situation, get help, ask for help. I'm going to come back to you on that one. Your, your turn, Miss. Um, I am Charmin Prince. I'm a Guyanese. Um, I've worked with Volunteers of America for the last 16 years. I just started a new position today as the Director of Program Services for promotion, Veterans. Promotion, promotion. Well, yeah. <laughs> That's right. Um, you have to spend some of that money. But for the last, <laughs> the last 13 years, I was the director, Program Director for SRO. 175 rooms. Um, I'm a PhD candidate working on my dissertation <laughs> <laughs> um, on procrastination. Oh, so you going to be a doctor? You're going to be a doctor? Yeah. Aye, aye, aye. The next time I come on your show, you'll have to address me as Dr. Dr. Prince. Aye, aye, aye. aye. Uh, <laughs> 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 I also host the talk show, um, Talk Time with Charmin, and I just started a new show in Guyana. The Charming Print Show. Mm. I, oh, that's so. That's your okay. Uh, and so you have it. This, this is the panel. But I want you to. I want to pick you up. Uh, pick up on something you said just now, mm. of the unattended addiction or the mm. unattended incident. Mm. Yes. Leads to that leads to behaviors. Mm -hmm. Manifesting behaviors. Few in your yes. adult that yes. ca carries over yes. to the adult life. Yes. I mean, you ladies could join in on, mm -hmm. on this too because and everybody nodding their head, yes, yes, yes. Go ahead. That's because, um, like we said, we've been talking about if you are exposed to trauma as a child or even as a teenager, your young adult years, and it was never addressed, it's like the root cause of the issue was never addressed, then it's going to manifest in itself. Like we said, you could become a sex slave, mm -hmm. drug addiction, alcohol abuse, whatever it is, because you're trying to feel better about yourself. So whatever it is that entices you and gives you that comfort that you're searching for, that's what you're going to gravitate towards. And a lot of sexual abuse victims, especially when they, it's not addressed, they become promiscuous. And we, society, label them. Yeah. Oh, she's fast, right? That's why I didn't like the draw, word. I draw it back. I pull it back already. I still have to say it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right, okay. Unfortunately, you made that mistake, so you open yourself. Is that a mistake? Not a mistake. Okay, so we say they're fast. We say we call them all kind of names, mm -hmm. and we label them. Yeah. But none of us, uh, none of us in in the community or society stop to ask, well, why is she sleeping with so many men? 
why is she doing that? Or even stop the young lady to say, why are you doing this to yourself? But instead, we re-victimize them by labeling them and calling them names. So the, the community needs to be re-educated because we've become very desensitized. No, and we're no longer our brothers and sisters but keeper. But no, okay, good point, and, and point well taken, and God knows I ain't gonna say it too fast anymore. <laughs> but how do we re-educate? Now, habits, from, habits are, are, you know. Hard to break. Easy to, easy to start, hard to break. Mm -hmm. Yeah, how do we re-educate I mean, we're on a pro program now, and I, I just got re-educated, so I know not to say fast no more. Mm -hmm. Well, how do we re-educate my cousin, my uncle, my uh, na, 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 who have this notion in the head? Well, you know, she's an easy one. You know, she's like a closed pin. You know, you squish your head, you leg open. Just what like we're doing. Continue talking. Continue talking about it. Mm -hmm. Having and raising awareness. Right. Mm -hmm. Because the thing is, if if we, you know. No one is an angel, no one is a saint. We all do things, but we have to be responsible. Mm -hmm. For every action, there's a, there's a reaction. Mm -hmm. So when we see certain behaviors, we have to intervene. We have to, as we said earlier. Ask questions. Ask questions, talk about how was your day, what's going on. You know, I, I see you twerking. You know, I'm not going to demean someone twerking when I was whining and doing the cabin stabbing. It's, it's a, you know, but I have to get into your world. Yeah, I have to meet, I have I thought to you say you're not a Jamaican. You know, okay, we'll stop it. Yeah, <laughs> I to, yeah, I have to meet you where you're at. I have to understand that when, when my son or my daughter is going through puberty or adolescence, right. you're going through some changes right now. Right. We also have to educate boys about, you know, this thing, you go out there and sow your oats, yeah. but you're out there mm. and you're 60 years old and you're still sowing so your, your oats. Mm -hmm. And you can't find, all these children. can't find fertile ground, so what? you keep sowing. Wait a second. And it's irresponsible, so then you come, you wind up in my program, and mm. people are positive. You have all these STDs. You're uh. not being responsible. You're siring all these children, and you're not being responsible. And, and so if, if we don't have conversations about boundaries, responsibility, what does it mean to be a man? What does it mean to be a woman? You know, I'm not going to police women and tell them they need to dress this certain way or men, but what does it mean? Have respect for yourself. You know, if my daughter is here, have respect. We, as men, we should respect women regardless of how they just read mm -hmm. these certain things. We have, to, we have to grow up and be mature. The line, the line right? has to be there. In this c country, women don't wear burqas, right. right? It's a different culture. Right. But if I see someone, I'm not going to act in a way that's disrespectful right. because then I'm going to set something off in her. Right. So we have to change the way we interact with people just as human beings because it's very important. I, okay, no, there's a thin line though, but it's a, mm -hmm. it's a, it's a line that, it's an invisible line and women will complain and we're talking adults now, well, I give you all these signals, and I get this. I who I give you all these signals, and you never say nothing. I didn't know you were interested. I never know you. I didn't even know you noticed me. How do you respond to that? No, this is we're talking adult, not children. No, adult to adult, and she's giving off her pheromones, and I'm giving off my pheromones, and you know, relating to each other. But then I'm not pushing beyond because I don't want to cross that line, right. and I'm you know holding her space, seeing her as the queen that she is, and just admiring like this. Beautiful, all the entire crew, my entire crew, and everybody else in here, they just look so f fantastic. <laughs> how do I, how do I not violate that space? And and you know, I, I know how to do that, but for the general public, how do I uh, 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 avoid crossing that line? So I guess it goes back to initially having boundaries. And as an individual, you have your moral barometer, right? That you say you know right from wrong, and. Um, you're going to follow through whatever your personal beliefs are and according to society standards, right? So it's up to you to say to yourself, listen, this is incorrect. Whether it's a, your spiritual person, because your spiritual person can, your spiritual being can guide you as well, and your morals, your respect. And it goes back to how you were raised as a kid. Mm. Because if you weren't taught right from wrong, or if you didn't have that parent who sat with you, guide you, and have these difficult conversations, 
then who are you going to be as an adult growing up? Now, parents need some parents need to take back responsibility and stop allowing social media mm -hmm. and TV to grow their kids. Mm -hmm. That's a big problem. Mm -hmm. Kids have too much access to information that's not gonna that's not productive. That they cannot manage. And that they cannot handle. It's just too much. Right. So we have to take back responsibility as a community and as a parent. Parents need to start taking back their responsibility. I've always said it. I honestly believe that in order to be a parent, you should have to get a license. Mm. I'm sorry. Half, some people are having kids. They don't need to be having kids. Ooh. And that's a problem. Ooh. Not because you can procreate, that means you should have a child. Ooh. I'm serious. Because you have children having children, we don't have any understanding then what do we expect our society to look like? If you cannot afford to take care of a child, why are you going to have a child? It's so expensive for diapers, send that child to school, daycare and everything. What do you expect? Babysitting. Babysitting. Simi it's hard. Simi it's a lot of money. <laughs> Simi like, you're going to say something. Um, <laughs> to, <laughs> <laughs> to underscore what Marie just said, um, I think we need to really teach members of our, our society about the importance of primary socialization, that period where the child is under the care of the parent. And it's not, it hardly happens today, right? It hardly does. Because the child is in the care of the daycare person. Exactly. For, for, for and most for of the day. Most of the day. day and or in school and then after school and when the child gets home, you're the tired. The, the parent is tired, the child is tired, and then on weekend, mom has a weekend job. So what, what is the foundation that is being built for that child? Parent, parent to child interaction. So that is something that we need to get back to, the importance of primary socialization. I like that. And I wanted to say, as adults, I mean, in the workplace, there's, there's protocol. I mean, you, know, you, you come like a real philosopher, you know. <laughs> I listen to you. Go okay, ahead. Man. Go ahead. I'll own it. I'll own it. Yes, ma'am. But just you, you're interacting with someone and they feel uncomfortable. Say, hey, that's, I, I, you make me feel uncomfortable. Listen. A lot of times people will tell you something and you have to listen. And I always bring it back to if I have a sister or a brother and if, if I felt uncomfortable, I should be able to tell you something so you should stop the behavior. Right. So again, it's just mutual respect. common respect. Yes. If we don't have respect for each other, then it just keeps on multiplying, you know, so. And just to add to that, it's not only about the verbal communication. Mm -hmm. We've got to pay attention to the body language. Yes. That's really important. When the body talk. says, lock, that <laughs> means. You stay away. <laughs> that means lock. Yes. 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 Stay away. Exactly. But what happened, okay, this is another show. What happened to when <laughs> when no women now decide to give us mixed signal now? Come mm. on now, talk to me about that. Anyhow, that's another show. <laughs> 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 that's the next show. That's it. Next time we're going to come back on that one. Because mm. we're not good for giving those mixed signals. Mm. But on a serious note, um, we have any contact f um, information that we want to share, uh, websites, uh, 800 numbers that people who are in distress, who need help, that they can call, etc. Those kind of things. So, um, in terms of if you suspect um, that a child is being abused, you could call the state central registry. Um, I think it's one eight hundred five two three hope. That's the phone number. You could also contact three one one. You could contact your local precinct. Um, and there is Rain. That's another um, for sexual perpetrators. That's another um, site that you could go onto as well. And I think that's about it off the top of my head right mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. And if you're a victim, a survivor, seek help. It's very, very important for you to get help, therapy, and counseling. At any age. At any, At any age. age. Exactly. And it's not your fault. And it's not your fault. It's important to remember that. And just before I came in this evening, you can go online and just type in warning signs of yeah. child's uh, sex abuse or anything. The information, we're living in the information age. You can just type in anything and, and anything up. comes up. So if you, if, again, as, as the other guest said, if you see something, ask questions, get involved, or speak to someone who you, who you may look up to and they can offer some guidance. A, 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 f a female friend of mine recently 
broke down in my arms, mm. literally broke down in my arms, that she was sexually molested at seven or eight years old. Mm. And she finally found the strength to confide in me. Wow. And I didn't expect it. I'm not a counselor, mm. you know, but I always talking to folk. And I, it took me to a place that I didn't know that I could go mm. to say to her, just like what you just said, it's not your fault. It really is not your fault. And it's up to you to really, you know, pull yourself together, know that you have let it out, and know you're going to feel lighter. Yeah. That's right. And like what the move, 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 move from there. Yes. I have a 61 year old who actually um, shared for the first time that she was sexually abused and the trauma that accompanied that experience where she was sexually abused, went home to her mother and grandmother and um, went home to her mother first and her mother blamed her, took her to the grandmother and they peppered her. <gasps> and she's now 61 years old and she is now seeking therapy That's right. because she has just learned and understood it. that it's important for us to seek help, yes. for her to seek help. Yeah. On Caribbean Classroom, you never know what you can find. Tonight we're talking child, sex, child sexual abuse. You know somebody who you suspect might be an abuser or a victim of the abuse? We we'll gave you some numbers. You could call me. You can go online. You can call your precinct. I would normally say call the priest, but nowadays you can't even trust the priest. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, but you could call the police precinct. At least them, they, you know, you, you can kind of trust them a little bit, mm. a little bit. But parents, you have a responsibility for your children. You have a responsibility to your children. There are too many children raising themselves. Mm -hmm. And not because a parent is dead or a parent, you know, is in jail or nothing like that. They just, parents are there but they're not there. You have to pay attention to the language of your children, mm -hmm. all of it. The verbal language, the play language, the body language, the way in which they interact with you or not interact with you. We are our children's protectors. Mm -hmm. We have to secure them and make sure that they're safe. Tonight's program, we're just scratching the surface. It's the first time they're meeting each other, so they're a little kind of a tense, like tight, you know, so they're not knowing which of those vibes going, so they're kind of holding it back a little bit. But I'm going to have them come back again, and we're going to explore this topic some more. I want to encourage those of you who are watching, because I know you're watching, and you're scared to call, that's not a problem. We're going to continue to talk about this. Thank you for watching Caribbean Classroom. Find us on Facebook. Find us on what is that, um, Instagram, I think it is. And uh, leave a comment. Good night. Adios. Peace. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks to the crew. Thanks to the crew. Yes. For doing a bang up job tonight. Big up. <laughs> nice. Thank you. It was a pleasure. Yes. And we're not going to be strangers.